This conference will now be recorded. Hey, welcome to our monthly OCP storage project. Um, we have uh, two main topics today. The first is the sustainability white paper for the fifth tenant that John Michael will give us an overview of and, and bring us all up to speed. And then just talking through a little bit on the uh, OSP Global, Global Summit uh, that's uh, gathering abstracts right now. So with that, I'll hand it over to John Michael. Thanks, Never let me share my screen here. You guys can see what I'm sharing? You no, can not see uh, all of our names and whatnot. Mm -hmm. I think you're sharing the wrong screen. Yeah. Weird. Share. Oh, entire screen. That's odd. It's that letting me share this screen. So. Yeah, I would I'll, see I'll a move. browser. Yeah, I'll just move it over here. That that'll work. Uh, okay. You guys can see this now. Okay. Yep, I think we see you're it ready. now. Yep. Great. Uh, well, yeah, Amber. Thanks again for sending out the copy of the white paper. We. Uh, are getting close to the IC review and actually being published where we can have it on the OCP contributions page. Uh, the idea behind this white paper was, um, you know, sustainability means something pretty specific to OCP and we have specific work groups and items that we're tackling. Uh, now that OCP is the fifth tenant, we wanted to make sure that all the uh, other work groups and sub projects understand what sustainability means and how they can actually tie sustainability uh, to the tenant when they're doing the product submissions or submissions in the IC. So uh, we thought we'd write this white paper to basically describe what does sustainability mean to OCP? I know, you know, sustainability means a lot of different things in different companies. There's ESG, a lot of people will confuse, uh, you know, efficiency and, and sustainability. And so really this was our take to try to kind of explain this. So it's a pretty easy read. I hopefully everybody read it, uh, what, you know, before and I'll just kind of go over some of the high level topics, but um, the first part is really, we want to embrace some of the good things that OCP already does like efficiency and openness and basically having our opportunity to actually make sustainability standards that we can share. A lot of this is even going on right, right now in the, the new carbon modeling work group, for instance, where you know there's gonna be best practices uh, around carbon modeling that's gonna be shared with a bunch of other companies. So there's already a bunch of good stuff that OCP is doing. So sustainability actually makes sense, a lot of sense to do in OCP. Um, the other part is this moving beyond energy efficiency. So I think a lot of people just think sustainability, they think energy efficiency, they think PUE. Um, and, and again, we, we, we even saw this quite a bit, and I'll, I'll kind of give some examples uh, at the OCP Global Summit, where a lot of people were saying, hey, look how sustainable we are, but actually they were just talking about energy efficiency for their product, which is fine. It's a good thing, but it, we just made, we're trying to help people understand what is the difference and how do you talk about it? Uh, and then now as the fifth tenant uh, all product submissions have to be uh, sustainable and so what does that mean that means you just have to basically describe uh we, we have the guiding principles for how you describe your sustainability tenant uh and we what we came up with was meaningful relevant and data driven we'll kind of dive into what, what exactly we're looking for so uh this was kind of just the high level overview of yes sustainability is a project but there is a bunch of work going on in sustainability in the other sub teams and I, ideally, we don't want all the work to be done in the sustainability project. I mean, there are certain sub subgroups that are happening right now is uh, the data center facilities and carbon modeling work group. In the past, we had the circularity work group. The, out the output of that was the media sanitization white paper as well as the design for circularity guide. Um, but really all the, the products will have their own sustainability sections and their own things that mean something to that specific segment. Uh, so in the white paper, we go through kind of three areas. One is this transparency reporting and metrics, uh, which we go into two, kind of two categories. One is just for data center operators and one is for suppliers. And then we go into circularity, going through the design for circularity guide, categories of circularity. And you know, I'm gonna spend a little bit more time on that. Uh, but really you know, de defining circularity as you know, materials maintaining their highest value, value flow possible prioritizing reuse, uh, getting lots of different use across different lives. You have to, we talked a lot about this in, in this work group about how that pertains to SSDs and hard drives, specifically on me media sanitization, transfer of ownership, uh, and that being a major barrier to circularity. 
Uh, and then interoperability and efficiency, which are kind of those last categories are there, there are their own things in OCP, but they are tied to sustainability, especially around you know, designing product for circularity. You may have reusable components, uh, reusable subcomponents, things that are industry standard. Stuff like EVSFF is, is a great example of this. Uh, yeah, so the first one is for, you know, the, the first chapter part uh, is uh, around the data center operations. This is pretty well understood, scope one, scope two, scope three, uh, kind of just defining the, the greenhouse gas reporting standard and then uh, pop up. We, we did have a really good example uh, down here um, from Alex at Schneider on with some example metrics that you could use if you're a data center operator or a company reporting your scope one and scope two on you know the different frameworks and standards um, that you would want to use. But really, it kind of goes down to energy, greenhouse gas emissions, which people call carbon footprint, carbon emissions, scope one, scope two, scope three. Uh, and you have your carbon usage effectiveness, carbon offsets, stuff that falls into that category. And then you have water and waste. So these are really the, the categories within the data center operators. Uh, DJ had this nice slide during the OCP Global Summit this year that basically said for a company like Meta, who was trying to get to net zero at 2030, not just for their own uh, their own operations, but entire the entire value chain, uh, it is now flipped because most of their data centers are now using renewable energy. The majority of their scope three comes from embodied carbon from components that they buy from uh, vendors for stuff like CPUs, DRAM, and SSDs. And so this is a pretty like important topic for uh, for the downstream for these cust you know for these hyperscalers that have to buy components. And so for these um, downstream folks like that are making devices, uh, really the best way to communicate your uh, uh, sustainability as far as greenhouse gas reporting, water waste uh, is through a life cycle assessment. So we go through and give some examples of, there is a OCP white paper on life cycle assessments that was done by Microsoft and some other folks. For hyperscalers, there's some examples in this white paper about ISO 140 and the family of standards around environmental product declarations. Um, I think I've said this before, there are some, some storage vendors that have some uh, really good LCAs that are publicly posted on the website. And there are some, most of, the storage vendors have zero publicly facing LCAs that you can find on their website. Uh, yeah, so that's uh, definitely, we have a lot of room to do here. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about why we want to get some of these uh, people, the storage vendors into the other work groups like the carbon modeling work groups so we can have some consistent reporting across life cycle assessments. And so that when these um, hyperscalers and other customers are trying to properly report their scope three, they can have APIs and access to the data from uh, you know at the NAND level, at the hard drive level, uh, per unit, per terabyte. You know, there's there's lots of stuff we can do here. But uh, yeah, step step one is just getting life cycle assessment, which again is, is not being done very consistently today. <laughs> uh, yeah, then the next section is about product circularity. So uh, there there is a lot of sections that we go into in the circularity um, so the first is really just defining what the circular economy is and then going into the areas of the circular economy we talk a lot about life extension use extension um, i think we favor the term use instead of life devices aren't alive but i know people talk about life and end of life but we're trying to get more towards use and end of use in the terminology uh, with reuse being the most important aspect of circularity because it has the highest uh, maintaining the highest value across the use uh, about across the life cycles. Um, so in, you know, if you measure this in carbon, reusing the device, so taking a device that would be used for five years, for instance, and extending the use period to seven or eight years uh, through reuse and media sanitization, that would tremendously decrease the embodied carbon across if you amortize it per year. So this is the most important uh, aspect of circularity to, to look at, but there's other things. Um, repairing, refurbish, remanufacture. Uh, actually in the design for circularity guide, I give some good examples of how you can uh, have stuff that can keep devices in use for longer through firmware updates. There's really good stuff like in the OCP NVMe SSD spec, like the C1 log page for being able to recover from firmware errors, You know, not break a drive after you have a, a minor firmware fault. These are really important things to keep devices in use for longer. Uh, so yeah, go in here. And so there's two really parts of 
this is just the defining circularity section. You can click on our design for circularity guide, which pops you up this little Google spreadsheet, which is meant for use for uh, the other projects like the storage project to go through here and look at their products and go through these categories and say, okay, which of these can I, I tie to my product and disclose in my spe uh, specifications in the sustainability specs that we published through OCP. There's tons of, tons of these categories. And again, if you look through just like the OCP and BME SSD spec, there are a ton of uh, things in there that could actually be tied to sustainability stuff like you know, industry standard form factors. I mentioned firmware recovery and errors, resiliency, security. These are all stuff that has ties to uh, sustainability and circularity. So uh, yeah, so check that out. If you are looking to start disclosing your product circularity, there are multiple ways to do that. Um, there are industry standard things like, like Ellen MacArthur Foundation Cir Material Circularity Indicator, but it, those are not very well suited for the ICT industry. So which is why we created the design for circularity guide in OCP, because now we have some very specific circularity things that are tied to ICT component. Uh, all right, yeah, then um, next one is this uh, efficiency and interoperability section. Uh, the interoperability, I think everybody knows this <laughs> pretty well. In this work group, it's pretty easy to understand. You have stuff like EDSFF, uh, data center, uh, DC, MHS, open rack, um, OCP NIC, these are industry standard form factors, connectors, you have PCI Express, Mimi, you know, these are, these are good things. These are industry standard specifications that give you interoperability. What we want to make sure as far as from the storage side, again, I, we're going this direction with the OCP uh, storage specs is having industry standard firmware so that, you know, we can at the end of the first use sanitize the drive and, and reuse it and not be tied to some specific firmware version or at least have a way to you know flash that uh, you know back at the manufacturer prior to you know, resale, but yeah, interoperability is, is really important part of circularity because if things aren't interoperable, then nobody can use them for a second use. Uh, so um, this is where I saw probably the most confusion at uh, OCP Global Summit, which was you know. Uh, efficiency is one aspect of circularity, I'm sorry, of sustainability, but it is not all of sustainability. And, you know, I'll pick on, you know, I, I'll just say, I, I saw a, a decent amount of presentations that were, were guilty of this. I'll pick on, I'll pick on Jeff because he had a keynote and uh, <laughs> this is the Ampere keynote, but, uh, you know, we, you know, basically, you know, okay, so this slide saying, you know, server efficiency is fundamental to sustainable growth. Uh, okay, this is not terrible. You know, cloud native compute is more sustainable. So making a claim like this, one should never be done against the competition. Uh, you know, there are guidelines that you know, prohibit basically claiming doing sustainability claims. And as you'll see, there's a lot of, especially when you're even comparing lifecycle assessments, everybody has different boundary conditions, have different methodologies right now. So comparing competitively sustainability is actually very, not only challenging, but it's not, you should not be doing it. Um, but uh, saying your product is more sustainable when a better word is maybe more efficient uh, in, in something like this, in an example like this. Um, so there are ways to claim, you know, about how sus sustainable you are, or how the energy efficiency aspects of your product are making your product more sustainable. And you can do that through a life cycle assessment. And if you wanted to say, for instance, um, okay, we made the product 30% more efficient and when we, when this customer did a life cycle assessment, it reduced their scope three by X number of tons of carbon because the use phase went down by 30%. So that is a, a way to say that your, your efficiency had an impact on sustainability. So you can't just say, oh, my product's more efficient, so all my products are sustainable because that's not what that means. <laughs> and uh, yeah, the, the there is a desire to go beyond um, PUE. So this is, uh, you know, there are a bunch of metrics. Uh, I know Meta you know, has been talking about HUE um, in the white paper. We, we go through actually quite a bit of um, different uh, sustainability uh, metrics that are being developed. So there's come some, some stuff coming through EU Climate Neutral Data Pack, GCG Green Grid, EED, I guess Climate Accord. Um, there is a, a ton of work right going, now going on in the carbon modeling work group in the OCP sustainability project. We basically be able to, you know, actually have standardized processes for reporting embodied carbon across uh, life cycle assessments to be used across 
chip manufacturing and factories. Um, but yes, so there, uh, we, we do want to, as OCP, embrace a standard that is beyond PUE for devices. Um, we, uh, again, I think the commitment is that we will do something. Uh, there are a bunch of competing standards out there, uh, and the OCP sustainability project will kind of help. Was there a question there? All right. Uh, yeah. So the last um, this this is just kind of pop this in here to um, talk about the new work streams that are mm -hmm. going on. Project I mentioned the uh, there was a metrics and reporting work stream, and then there was a security work stream. Those are the, the not the work worker meetings aren't happening anymore. There is a monthly sustainability project call. So if, you, if you're going to go to any of the sustainability project calls, I think the, the monthly call is is pretty easy one to go to. Uh, again, those are recorded and on the wiki as well, but uh, there are two new work streams for 2023. There's the data center facility and sustainability. Uh, uh, um, that one is really for all non-IT hardware. So there's stuff going in to like the OCP Ready program from Rob. Priya from Google is, I believe, leading this one. Uh, but it's really about data center facility power, cooling, architecture, IT space layout, monitoring control, all the stuff that's not the IT components, uh, just for the actual data center itself. Uh, and then there's the carbon modeling work stream and Mohan and Scott uh, are, are leading that and they are looking, this one is just getting started. I think there's been a handful of meetings, but the priority they've decided is to look through ICs and packaging and then storage and networking. Uh, they do need some help on the storage side. Uh, and so I told them there are some, some vendors that have quite a bit of data on lifecycle assessments for hard drives and are starting to do this analysis for SSDs, at least for the, the manufacturing carbon from the factories. And so this would be a good time for the storage vendors to engage in this carbon modeling work stream so that there can be some standardized format across, you know, NAND vendors across different fabs to basically be able to report some kind of coherent standards so that when the customer kind of reports upstream uh, for their scope three, then they can, that don't necessarily have to do it every single product. I know it's very tedious right now because uh, the SST vendors have tons of different products and they have a ton of different capacity points and just picking an arbitrary capacity point, some server config, it doesn't give you all the old CA data you really need for all the customers to actually run their, their full life cycle assessment. So, uh, yeah, uh, again, looking for help here. So they'll, they'll probably need a few, a few volunteers from storage work group. Uh, all right. So yeah, summary. So again, the white paper is really just meant for the, the audience of the white paper is other projects in OCP, like the storage project, uh, it, talking about sustainability is much more than energy efficiency. So again, to recap, just um, transparency reporting metrics for data center operators, for, uh, for event device vendors and manufacturers, and then going into circularity, interoperability, and then talking about efficiency and how it relates to sustainability. Uh, and um, yeah, we're here to help. I, you know, I, I, I already told Amber and Ross, I'm happy to review any of the OCP storage specs and say, here's all the things that I think are already in there that are really good for sustainability that you guys should be putting in the sustainability section. Um, so yeah, again, uh, and this will be part of the uh, IC reviews for sustainability. Again, this meaningful, relevant, and data-driven, I mean, those are pretty straightforward words, but really the meaningful part is just that, you know, we want to avoid greenwashing. Again, don't just, have, don't pick one thing and say, yeah, our product, we made the product 10% more efficient. So Yes, this is a huge sustainable product. Um, yeah, this so just really the idea is that we, we want to be reviewing the submissions that there is a meaningful impact. And for the storage project, really that's just, you know, you know, on the uh NVMe SSD spec, for instance, there's you know, one to two sustainability line items, <laughs> you know, ones that you must do an LCA. And <laughs> like uh, so I, I think there's a lot more as you just heard uh, that we can put in, in security, media sanitization. Uh, circularity, interoperability that fall into these categories that can be easily applied to the storage spec. So, yeah, and again, I'm here to help just review uh, the rest of the OCP sustainability project is happy to review any of the contributions and, and uh, help. Uh, yeah, Thanks, John the... Michael. Do people have, oh yeah, go ahead. Oh yeah, sorry, here, here's, you know, there's a link to the wiki, but you guys should you guys should know where to find it. It's uh, very, fairly easy to find on the on the page.
Thanks so much, John Michael. Um, do people have questions? Thanks for driving. It's it's a huge and important area, and uh, we all have to get our life cycle assessments done, um, definitely, and more. Um, so let me do. Let's see. The next item is just the open. Uh, not the open, sorry, the um, OCB Global Summit. So um, a couple of things I wanted to just touch on. One is, uh, so are you guys seeing the uh, OCB Storage Tech Talks? Is that yes. sharing? Or... Perfect. Yep. So um, just wanted to highlight um, that the May event that we had, um, you can find the, the video here and on the past events page at OCP, and I'll include this in the notes, and it also has all the PDFs of the different presentations. We've already had um, 895 views of the talk, um, so obviously people were finding it interesting. So uh, just great job by the team, so I wanted to call that out. Um, for the OCP Global Summit, that is happening on, um, if you guys hopefully are seeing my screen refresh to the uh, Global Summit page, um, so that is occurring in San Jose on October 17th through 19th. So please uh, make sure you uh, mark your calendars and uh, and plan to plan to attend. The uh, call for presentations is out. So the breakout sessions uh, for days two and three of the of the summit, um, including the storage track, um, the deadline to submit is June 16th, which is next Friday. And so uh, please make sure you're working on your abstracts. Um, there's a I remember correctly, a thousand uh, character limit. So make sure that you submit. What may you? Do you have something to add? You're echoing. I'm echoing. Let me try to figure out what's going on. No worries. So, um, but did you have anything to add, Swapna? Or oh, I think she. No, no, I'm, I'm here, and I think uh, when I switched from my phone, it added me twice. I ah, don't have that's always fun. Okay. No, no, no worries <laughs> at all. So, um, on the uh, so, just wanted to highlight for everybody to make sure that you're getting your abstracts ready by end of next week and getting those submitted. There is more time for future technology symposium if you have um, something that's not related. I mean, it could be storage related, but if you have um, a deeper dive into in this future technology items. Um, there's this symposium that's usually a two pager type of, uh, of item that you submit and that's due June 30th. And then there's also some technology demonstrations. So please go about uh, getting those together. Um, and uh, the summit theme this year is scaling innovation through collaboration. So they have a bit of material, uh, Cliff Grossner uh, wrote a blog on that. So, so feel free to take a look at, at that if you're interested. Um, any questions on the uh, the summit? So we just roll from one to the next. Um, so that's what I had for t today. Um, does anybody else have any opens or any agenda topics for our next monthly call? I don't know if right. I could do it next. I don't know if I could do it next month, but I do know that um, our team is looking at doing <clears throat> the stuff that we brought forward before about aligning stuff, and I'll have to find out when I can bring that back in. I'm not sure if next month will be good, but maybe the month after I can give a status back. And Mike, do you mean on that one the uh, the tooling for the? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Okay. That'd be great. Anyone else have any opens or future agenda topics? Uh, yeah, Amber, I just wanted to inquire. We talked uh, some months ago about uh, hyperscaler requirements for sanitization. Um, any thought when that might be uh, presented? Um, so I think the key thing is to get alignment on, uh, on what those requirements would be for, um, for example, what SPDM version is a root of trust required and is that Calyptra or not? Um, and I'm not certain on the timeline uh, for coming to consensus on that. Um, Lee, is that something that you're perceiving as part of the, the NVMe data center SSD revision 2.5 or is that future beyond yeah. that? Yeah, a lot of that, what you just talked about is in there. So it's, you know, also things around the, what's it, 283 and purge requirements and things like that. So, okay. So, Thanks. 
Do you think that uh, we would maybe be able to do that in a month or two um, in terms of a just a deeper dive overview or or any yeah, like that? Together. Okay. Mm -hmm. cool. Very good. Thank you. Anyone else have any opens questions? Awesome. Well, enjoy your evening or your morning, depending on where you're going. So, sorry. Say again, John. Yeah, great job on the the summit, uh, the Storage Tech Day. That was great. And uh, yeah, I... excited about the next one, right? <laughs> Go ahead, Mike. No, I was just say it was great. I actually liked the presentations, man. They were they were on point. Yeah, it seems like we all are excited about telemetry. So I'm excited to see what telemetry progress we make by October. <laughs> Awesome. Well, thanks everybody for your time. Have a wonderful night or morning. All right. Cheers, everybody. Bye, everyone. Thank you all.